Now let's leave the platform stuff behind and let's move on to a slightly different, although related topic. Let's move on to the topic of languages that we use as .NET developers. And there is a number of different things that we need to talk about there. First of all, there's the core .NET languages. And we still always get the same question, right? Should I use C Sharp or VB? Or is VB dead? Um, and no, you know, all these languages are alive and well. Uh, which one you want to use depends on the one that, that you like, right? I often say, you know, which language is better, English or Spanish? Well, it's probably the one that you speak well is, is a pretty good choice. The one that the people speak that you want to communicate with. And same is true here, right? C Sharp is probably a pretty good choice, but if you're in a team of VB developers and the, the, the technologies you want to drive are available in VB, that's, it's not a bad choice. But C Sharp, admittedly, is the leader of the pack, right? That's by far the most popular .NET language, millions of people using it. Uh, and certainly a lot of innovation is going on, and it's kind of like in the old IBM days, right? Nobody ever got fired for, for buying IBM. Well, nobody gets fired for choosing C Sharp as their .NET language of choice. There's a lot of stuff going on there. A lot of new things are coming out for C Sharp first, right? So that's kind of the situation, but VB is still going strong. Uh, surprisingly, we actually see a good amount of growth in VB. We see a lot of new people coming in. We see a lot of VB people sticking with VB, at least for their core development. Now, we also see an interesting development where a lot of VB guys, when they try something new, they use C Sharp for some reason. Like there was this big uproar in, in Windows Mobile, or Windows Phone, I should say. When it first uh, brought out the SDK, it was a C Sharp only SDK, and, and VB guys were livid. And why is C Sharp coming out first? And then, of course, Microsoft released the VB tooling. And it turns out most of the VB guys still chose to use C Sharp, right? The VB stuff really wasn't adopted very well at all. So it's just kind of this odd phenomenon. And we kind of see this happening time and time again, although these people do not abandon VB otherwise. So it's like kind of weird, right? Do they just want to tip their toes into C Sharp for a while to check it out or something? But so that's kind of what we're seeing there. But again, both languages are going strong. Both languages are strategically important for Microsoft, will be around for a while. Size-wise, C Sharp's about 10 times bigger than VB in terms of users, so an order of magnitude bigger. Now we also have F Sharp. F Sharp goes the other way. It's an order of magnitude smaller than VB. But F Sharp is a really cool language for those who need it, right? If you're doing financial stuff, or I actually, uh, own a company, a spin-off of our organization that does genetic sequence analysis, DNA analysis. And uh, when we do that, we go through gazillions of different steps to analyze DNA. And some of those steps are just very mathematically intensive. And we use F sharp for some of those. And it's really cool. So if you have a need for F sharp, you know, that language has some nice features. Now, if you just kind of uh, consider it as like this language that you're going to build your business apps in, like, uh, it's a little bit of a wild ride, I'll tell you what. It's like building, you know, a lot of people tell me they feel it's like writing one huge mathematical formula. I guess not, you know, it's not quite like that, but it's in a way to a lot of new F-sharp developers kind of a, a fitting description. But be that as, be that as it may be, F-sharp has a very important role to play, will be around, you know, even though it's a niche language. So all these languages have a bright future, and whatever you choose, uh, I think you'll be very happy. But like I said, C Sharp is the one that supports the most scenarios. Now that's .NET languages. Of course, as a .NET developer today, you probably need to look a little bit beyond that horizon. So languages like JavaScript are very important. JavaScript in particular is probably the most popular general purpose language at this point. Right? If you have never done JavaScript and you think it's just this nasty, weird scripting languages, language that has all these just oddities? Well, it is this nasty, weird scripting <laughs> language with all these oddities, right? But it also does a lot of stuff that's actually pretty cool. There are some features in JavaScript that even if you're just a, a C-sharp developer, you should just kind of poke around in it and kind of see what people do with it, because it will make you a better C-sharp developer, because you'll get some new ideas as to how certain things can be handled. And so if you've never done anything with it, 
check it out. I encourage you to poke around in it. It's not as bad as you think it is. It's actually a pretty cool language in a lot of ways. But it ha does have certain characteristics, right? It's a dynamic language for one, which is a great benefit in a lot of scenario, uh, scenarios. But it also has downsides in others, right? There's always pros and cons. And, and some of the downsides of dynamic languages are when it becomes uh, when it gets to a point where, where the project becomes very large and you need to maintain it over time and stuff like that, then strong typing has really nice benefits. Right? The fact that you can refactor your code base and you know it's still going to work and things like that. Or with dynamic languages, you, you tend to have this characteristic that the last 10% of the app just seemingly never get done because as soon as you change something here, it breaks something there. Right? Those are benefits of strong typing. So, Whenever you want strong typing, it sure would be nice to be able to bring that in, right? Having that choice. And that's really what TypeScript is all about. So TypeScript, I think I have a separate slide about this. Here we go. TypeScript is this language that's now been around for a while. It was originally created by Anders Heilsberg, the father of uh, C Sharp. Right? That's what he's doing now is this TypeScript language. And what he's trying to do there, what, what he has done is he took the JavaScript language and added interesting features to it. Strong typing is one of them. The ability to create classes, inheritance, generics, all kinds of stuff is what he baked into TypeScript. And what TypeScript does is it's a transpiler. So it doesn't spit out binary code or, or IL code, but it spits out JavaScript. Right? So it just takes TypeScript and spits out JavaScript. And in fact, TypeScript is a superset of the JavaScript language. So uh, if you never wanted to use any special TypeScript features, you can write plain JavaScript in TypeScript. Uh, so that was the basic idea. Now, I'll be the first to admit, when that was originally announced, I was very skeptical. Because I would have bet my bottom dollar that the web developer non-Microsoft community was not going to wait for Microsoft to mess up their JavaScript. Right? But I was completely wrong. It actually turned out a lot of people took to TypeScript, even initially, and did a lot of things with it. So that was kind of cool to see TypeScript gain a lot of traction. And then another thing that I would have bet a lot of money against happened, and that was Google and Microsoft got together. Because Google had been working on their own version of a better JavaScript called AtScript, which they needed for Angular 2 because they needed a mechanism to essentially do annotations on code, or what we would call an attribute in C-sharp. Uh, so they created this at script language that was competing with TypeScript. And Microsoft and Google got together. And somehow, I would, I would love to have been a fly on that wall, somehow worked it out where Google decided to just never even release at script and just standardize on TypeScript as the language for Angular 2. And that, of course, was you know, the ultimate breakthrough for TypeScript. Now it's the default language in Angular 2. Tons of people use it. And it's just at this point, you know, I encourage you to not just check out JavaScript, but also poke around in TypeScript. It's, it's actually a really nice system. Now I'm going to go into a demo here. I'm just going to show you one quick thing just to get you started on that. If you have never done anything with TypeScript, now this is supported in Visual Studio now and other places, but if you have never done anything with it, go to typescriptlang.org, or I think you can even go to typescript.com and it redirects you there. And there's this playground link. And what you can do with this playground link is you can actually type some TypeScript right in here and it'll spit out the JavaScript that it creates, and you can even run the code right there. Right? So here, for instance, is a typical TypeScript function you know, where it looks very much like JavaScript, uh, except the parameter has a type declaration on it. And that then enforces strong typing. But when you look at what it creates in JavaScript, it's just plain JavaScript. Right? But while you're typing it, it, it helps you with creating this stuff. So this you can, you can try out right here. You know, if, if you do something wrong, right, it, uh, it will show you right here in this editor in the web browser. It's just kind of a cool way to play with this. And uh, you can take a look at uh, a few examples to get you started, just to kind of get an idea. And then move on to Visual Studio or one of those tools to really get into it. Uh, highly recommend it. So that's kind of where we're at with the languages at this point. Again, you know, if you're just a .NET developer, that's probably not going to cut it anymore today. Definitely encourage you 
to check out JavaScript because it's everywhere. It's in the browser. You can do server-side development with Node.js if that's your thing. And uh, so lots of stuff going on.